U.S. judge rules against Christian clerk who denied gay marriage licenses. On March 18th, Daniel, no, sorry, excuse me. On March 18th, David Booning, a U.S. district judge for the Eastern District of Kentucky, ruled against a Christian county clerk, Kim Davis, who was charged with violating the rights of same-sex couples. Here's the background. In 2015, despite the U.S. Supreme Court's historic ruling that federally legalized same-sex marriage, Davis continued to deny same-sex couples marriage licenses. She announced a day after the historic, the landmark over Obergfeld versus Hodges ruling that her office would no longer issue marriage licenses. According to the announcement, Judge Booning issued a preliminary injunction ordering Davis in her office to resume issuing marriage licenses. Davis declined to follow the order and was sent to jail. She was released a couple of days later. Davis argued that issuing marriage licenses to such couples is against her religious beliefs. She said, quote, that she could not give them a marriage license under God's authority, NPR reported. David uh, Ermond, er, Ermold, one of the men who was denied a marriage license by Davis, expressed his relief on Twitter, stating, quote, after seven years, Judge Booning finally ruled that Kim Davis intentionally violated our constitutional rights. Now the question is, will they hold her financially responsible for the insensitive and irrational legal mess that she created? Liberty Council, the Christian legal organization representing Davis, pointed out that former, former Kentucky Governor Matt Bevin's executive order that allowed county clerks to, quote, to not to issue marriage licenses that conflict with their religious beliefs. Matt Staver, founder and chairman of the Liberty Council, said that Davis's case raises, quote, serious First Amendment concerns. Wait, did she mention anything about uh, God's law versus U.S. law? Did you mention that? Yeah, she said that she could, quote, not give them marriage licenses under God's authority. Okay, but secular rarity has a good comeback to that. <laughs> secular rarity is saying, cool, don't worry, God has no authority under U.S. law. <laughs> <laughs> like you have no power. You have no power here. Um this this, I, this was a long time ago. Why is it why does it take so long to come up with decisions like this? Yeah, so there's been a lot of complications to this case, um, partially because the local governor at the time gave her pardons for her behavior. Um, the in past executive orders, like after she took this action that would allow clerks to continue to, to to deny marriage licenses on the basis of their religious freedom, their deeply held beliefs. Um, and so that complicated matters. Um, but finally, I, that, that's partially why I wanted to cover this story, because this is a very, very famous case in the United States, and we've now reached this point of conclusion. You know, if you don't know much about the law, it just seems like it, these things should be a lot more simple. This is the law. You did this. Okay. Like, okay. You violated the law. Oh, you didn't violate the law. Like, like how much computing power do you need to be able to calculate this? Like why? Like seven years? Like, I don't understand. Like, why is these are, these, this should be a lot more simple. <laughs> like, I don't know why. Um, but okay. I guess it took seven years. This is what your taxpayer money is being spent on. Um, so, so one what, thing we, that's going to happen yeah, go is on. that now an aspect of the legal battle is still going to continue and it's going to be over oh, wow. who's going to be paying for all of these legal proceedings. Is it going to be Kim? Is she going to be held liable? Will it be the, the Commonwealth of Kentucky? Will it be the county? AKA will the Kentucky's taxpayer Taxi. have to pay for this, which will oh, be maybe. hundreds and thousands, hundreds of thousands of legal fees over seven years of proceedings. Unbelievable. Misha is saying sad that such things take so long. Yeah, what's interesting is that aspects of this case or the story went all the way up to the Supreme Court. And so now there's the potential for this aspect of the case regarding the liability for paying the fees to actually be litigated all the way up to the Supreme Court. So parts of this battle are not over.
Um, one thing I wanted to say is that, you know, she drew a lot of support from the Christian conservative right when this happened. She announced that she was going to do this the day after, you know, this federal ruling. And it's, it's, it makes me so upset because, um, so there were a number of couples who were involved in this case, uh, two couples specifically. So, uh, Armand and now husband David Moore were denied marriage licenses three times. And another couple, James Yates and Will Smith, not the actor, were denied licenses four times. A deputy clerk, fi deputy clerk finally approved their licenses while Davis spent five days in jail for contempt of court. So they weren't even allowed to just get their marriage approved, which they were constitutionally guaranteed to have the right to be able to do until she was in jail. Both couples said the ordeal caused mental anguish and emotional harm, among other issues. Imagine trying so many times just to get your marriage approved. It's crazy. Mm. I hope they make her pay for all of this because... Mm -hmm. Yeah, like imagine like being such a cause of headache for so many people, you know. Um, we do have to highlight this one and one other comment. <laughs> Misha is saying she probably assumes she was persecuted. I mean, a yes. lot of her public statements definitely lend to that idea. I mean, Christians love that, you know. You could like, you know the mildest things towards Christian, many, how many Christians, not all Christians, they would assume. I mean, a lot of Christians like need persecution because that's how they know they're in the right, right? If you don't, if they're not persecuted, then like, we're like not on the right side of history, right? So they want to It's actually be... God's signal that you're doing his work, yeah. that the world comes against you because they cannot stand the light of God's message. Wow. Of homophobia. <laughs> <laughs> Again, not all Christians, okay? Just want to be fair. Um, okay, so Eric is what is... Eric Olson is saying, wouldn't accepting LGBT folks actually help Christianity in the West? How would homophobia help their religion? Well, this is a very progressive idea of which Christianity should be. And Eric, I know that before you became an atheist, partially because of Atheist Republic, you were a very progressive LGBT supporting Christian. So I understand where you're coming from, but these are people who are much more fundamentalist than you seem to be. And they, this is a central hill that they are willing to stand on and fight for. Um, they, and well, it's, it's not, they, they see it very differently. Like if they're not trying to help Christianity's public image in the West, like to them standing on this topic in what they believe is true to their faith that is helping their faith, showing people true Christianity and the depravity of the West, etc. Like that is what helps Christianity, not curtailing their message for the sake of popularity or, or cultural expediency. That would actually be mm. very, um, uh, like heretical to them in some ways. Yeah, I mean, um, like Susanna said, like first of all, this is God's you know religion so and jesus is all powerful so christianity will come they've they will win at the end and uh, this is more about you making sure that you're on the right side because you know god will do his will in their mind and there's no you know they will be victorious you know christ will be victorious at the end that's their understanding okay so uh, another way to look at it is like they are actually some of these people think like they are actually pro LGBT, um, but not they're sinning. They're pro the sinner. They love the sinner, but not the sin, right? So they think like we we care we care for. In fact, they think like maybe they care more about LGBT than we do, um, because they are. They care for them, so they want to try to make them stop sinning. You know what I mean? Like they think like people who like us who are say say that we're pro LGBT, we're actually doing LGBT people a disservice because we're encouraging them to live a life of sin and all of that, and we're basically making them far go farther and further away from God, right? So they might think like they're actually the true the people who love these people most or, or truly, mm -hmm. uh, and even though they're sinners, they would still love them. But they are not just because they love them. 
that doesn't mean that they're going to um, accept their sinning or encourage or be a vehicle for their sinning, right? Uh, they're like, you, they might tell us that you're misunderstanding us being against their sin as us being against them as individuals or being against them as people. We're not. We, actually we, we love, love them. them so much that we have to tell them that their actions are going to send them to eternal torment. Like, what yes. is more loving than trying to stop that? Um, exactly. And Eric is saying, yes, I was. I know they're fundamentalists. That's not why I left. But I felt and feel more at home with humanists and atheists. I'm not interested oh. in, quote unquote, true Christianity. Well, that's something we share in common. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for that. Hey, guys, if you're a fan of Blasphemy and Sexy Cali, you know, like me, then you need to be sure to subscribe to our newsletter. Link in the description below. Because if you subscribe, we will send you a free copy of our Blasphemous Art ebook. And let me tell you, it is the tastiest Blasphemy that you can find anywhere available today. And we are so generous with our Blasphemy that we continue to send you more Blasphemy every week. So make sure to subscribe. Link in the description below.